This is Michigan's Auto Talk Podcast, and this is episode 61. I am producer Phil Tower. We remind you that every episode is about celebrating the automobile, everything automotive. We're also about helping and supporting you, car and truck owners, across our great state of Michigan, birthplace of everything automotive. And for episode 61 and 60 and 59, we took a trip south uh, because this podcast is based in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We're in Hickory Corners, Michigan, uh, beautiful Hickory Corners, which is uh, just a little bit. Uh, Josh Russell, the executive director, is it? It's it's due east of Kalamazoo. Is that fair to say? Northeast. Northeast. Okay. Close. A- enough. Amy Everhart Perry. <laughs> you never up heard to of Hickory left. Corners. It's really yes. close to Prairieville. Hickory. You know all the big towns down here. <laughs> Th- thank you for the visual. This is uh, podcasting. People couldn't see that, but. I mean, yeah. it's like north, He's good east. Yeah, northeast. Uh, Al Schwinkendorf, John Puick are here as always, and uh, we covered a lot of ground. We wanted to talk about membership. I do know, you had mentioned in our last episode, you, you know people are members, but I, I do know a little bit about what they get to do. They get to do all kinds of cool parties here, including in the wintertime when there's nothing else to do. Classes, um, talks. Um, just really cool things. A lot of ongoing uh, member benefits, and I'm sure they get great deals on admission as well, too, and a whole bunch of other perks. But um, we are really pleased in this episode to uh, welcome the Director of Development and Membership, Amy Everhart Perry. And we wanted to talk about this is a museum which car lovers and people who are like big time into cars, they want to look at a membership. So first of all, Amy, welcome. Thank you. Okay. This is um, an opportunity to sell those, (laughs) our listeners. I I joked around in the last episode, the chances are a lot of people listening to us aren't members. Um, Talk about membership. I mean, if you were to say this is an average member um it's probably a car lover but i'll let you take it from there what what are your members i mean it's probably a cross section of everybody too absolutely absolutely we have 16 to 1700 members of the gilmore car museum and they really range you know we have the the retired guys that love cars you know in their 60s 70s 80s that come here all the time love our car shows we have a lot of family members so families with children that come Uh, and we actually we have members from all over the country so we have some people that live in washington state um i've I've talked to a couple members that said they've actually never been here before (laughs) but they just love what we do um so you know hopefully we're, we're hoping that our members physically come here and get to enjoy all that we have to offer here but we have quite a mix of members in that in that queue and then um what uh what are the benefits to a member yeah absolutely so uh membership is annual and it includes unlimited admission to the museum and car shows for the year Uh, we have uh, several different levels to accommodate different needs we have an individual individual membership at 55 dollars ranging up to a family membership host membership is um like if there's a a couple that doesn't have any kids, but they mm-hmm. want to be able to bring a friend or two when they come. That's the host membership. And then grandparent membership that we just started this year um, is so that um, a grandparent can bring their adult children as well as their grandchildren nice. to the museum. Very nice. Very and nice. then uh, we added this year uh, an option to kind of customize. So we have a, what we call a passenger add-on. So someone can say, I, I want a family membership, but I want to be able to fr- bring two extra friends with me when I come. So the add-on passenger is $30 per guest and that's good for every single time you come to the museum so, so come very, twice and it paid for itself yep yeah. absolutely nice. yep most of our membership levels are after you basically about the third or fourth time that you're here it's it's paid for itself just with the admission nice. to the museum and to the car shows we added this year uh, one benefit that's been very popular has been early entry to our Wednesday night cruise in. So okay. we're here tonight on Wednesday night yep. with our cruise in. Mm-hmm. And our members have just loved that extra perk to be able to come in half an hour early, get their parking spot, yep. and get, you know, <laughs> get first in line for the up. bar. Yep. And um, so that's been, I think, a great motivator for, our, for new members as well this year. Nice. I like the fact that you mentioned there are people all, all across the country, including, and it cracks me up, people have never visited, but they understand how, how that's really important to, to keep the history of the automobile alive, the industry. These guys know it. It's, 
it's changing before our eyes. I mean, everything is seeming seemingly going to electric, and uh, it just makes. Honestly, I think it makes this whole collection just more valuable, mm. more cherished. And uh, I, I, you know, I, who knows? 30 years from now, there could be an early Tesla collection. We, we, <laughs> you, never, you never know, but uh, that, that's fine. Um, you know, I, I, I guess if you could speak to that, how important it is to, you know, the, those members really care about passing on the heritage of the, the whole collector car lifestyle, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. You know, our mission is to tell the story of America through the automobile. And one thing that I love telling people um, genuinely from the bottom of my heart, it's so fun working at a place that just makes people happy. You know, <laughs> like it, it's just a place that people love to be. What's and... that like? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, need, we need that. <laughs> and just so many stories from people of um, cars evoke. Uh, you mentioned in, in one of the earlier podcasts that at the shows, you know, everyone can enjoy a show, whether or not you're a car nut. You know, if you don't know all the bits and pieces of what you're looking at, you can enjoy that. What you're looking at is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, and so people from all walks of life. And for me as someone who is, you know, I, I probably couldn't point out every single thing or recognize, you know, that's a 57 versus a 58. Um, but for me, cars evoke stories of childhood and family and the amount of people that we've seen from all walks of life that see a car and say, oh my gosh, my parents had a car just like that when I was growing up. And uh, for me, one, one moment that I had for that was during Winter Wonderland in, um, in December and January, we'd, we offered rides in some of our classic cars through the grounds and through the lights. And we had an 89 station wagon with a back facing seat. Nice. And, um, <laughs> I remember those. Yeah. And my, my dad had one of those when I was a little Out girl. Out of reflex, did you uh, yeah. start like and, smacking the right shoulder trying yep, to think yep. your brother? Yep. 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 So all of us 90s kids, you know, a lot of these 90s kids that are now parents of young children seeing this, this 89 station wagon and just having those moments of nostalgia. And uh, I remember one night I asked Josh, you know, things are winding down. And I said, will you take me for a ride in the station? wagon <laughs> he said you're an employee you can drive yeah. it i said but i want to sit in the back <laughs> he drove me through our lights display and i just sat in the back like a little seven year old like kicking my feet it's great I, i'm dying making, to... making faces to no one as you look out the back <laughs> oh we used to okay. go miles and miles staring at the camper yeah yeah We're sitting yeah. in the back and it's just like would okay. that have been a mer do you remember what that was probably What's an old station it's music? An 80, uh, Buick? the station wagon is 89 89 uh, chevy Okay. Oh yeah, oh, Barbie Chevy time. Capri Station yeah. Yeah. Was it green? It's brown. Tan. Tan. The seventies ones were green. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of like the uh, your, uh, National Lampoon. The Griswolds. Yes. Yeah, Griswolds. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I love it. Yeah, and you know what? You're right. They just cars are their memories. Um, but I love what you said about the members of the museum because really. Not only is it a happy place, people just, they have a common denominator. They love to talk cars, even if it's a Mopar guy versus a Chevy guy. And, you know, there's arguments, but, you know, for the most part, everybody Chevy's gets better. along. Everybody gets along. And uh, it's just, it's there for the celebration of the automobile. And in terms of uh, member events, uh, once somebody becomes a member, how do they find out about, you know, because I know you do new things every year, right? Yeah, absolutely. We send emails to our members regularly and we have a handful of members that don't use email. So sending them packets in the mail and making sure they have our show schedule for the year coming up. And one thing that I've been focusing on is really that relationship building and making sure that they know that they can call me uh, if they have any questions or need anything. And um, my approach to my work is very relationship based and um, just having them to know that they have a resource uh, available to them and someone they can call and say, Hey, I'm bringing a couple of friends or, you know, let's schedule a tour. And, um, and so just having that customer service element and kind of that feeling of we're kind of part of a, a network that all love some of the same things. Well, and it's so, so huge, but yet you still get that personal, yeah. Yeah. that personal contact, that yeah. personal interaction that I think makes it so much, so much better than anything any other museum, whether it be down in Dearborn or wherever, that that's just yeah. it. 
hits it right on the nail. Yeah. Along that vein too, I got to give a shout out to our volunteers. Our volunteers are so amazing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have several, several of them that are, you know, they're here every Tuesday and they're out in the lobby. They're talking to people about what we've got on display and telling stories and making those connections. And that really personable touch Mm -hmm. for that experience is just makes it. Tell me about the industry standard. Sure. Yeah, that's our, it used to be a print magazine for a long time. And I would guess some of our members um, that have never been here before might have joined as a member to get that magazine. I was going to say, there's like Mm -hmm. Great Lake shipping groups and that, that I've never been to their museums or met anybody, but I joined them for their magazines. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And so uh, they just, uh, Emily, who is here in the room with us, they just uh, switched that over to be a digital video magazine okay. that we're doing quarterly so cool, our first actually. one came out in december and we had another one in march and we'll have another one coming up soon in june um okay and i'm so gonna each sign of up those, just for that yeah, it's, yeah, about, yeah. Yep. it's about 15 to 20 minutes uh each each episode and it's got a couple features of things going on here or talking a little bit about some of our exhibits and they've highlighted some of our volunteers and members during that so a little kind of behind the scenes and that's only um only our members receive the link i'm kind of an old school book type guy but if you're talking stories about cars and stuff like that video is way better than a magazine you know Mm -hmm. two pictures can't do what two minutes of video can show you absolutely yeah that's a great point across the table from you amy everhart perry with the gilmore car museum uh are two Auto mechanics, certified automobile technicians, they've been working on cars a long time. This guy, a little bit longer than that guy. Gilmore Garage Works, talk about that um, and what, what that is for the museum here. Yeah, absolutely. That was when I was preparing to come here and doing my research um, before my interview. Uh, looking at that program was just really impressive to me as someone who came to Gilmore from the education world. I think that's, for me personally, that's a really interesting bridge. Um, and I think we're getting to we're getting to a point in our country where we're realizing not everyone has to get a four year degree to have a really fantastic career. Um, I think my <laughs> my generation was kind of in this like everyone goes to college mode, um, and that was an okay path for me. But for some people, you know, they want to do that hands on work and have those other opportunities, and there are really great careers out there that need young people interested in this kind of work. Um, And so I think this program is very unique and very needed in our country and and for our young people. Uh, So GarageWorks runs Tuesdays and Thursdays during the year, during the school year, after school. And they feed them dinner. They have a couple different tracks for programs that they can focus on while they're here. And uh, they tell they tell the students, you know, you don't need any prior experience. You don't need to know what kind of wrench I'm asking you for, what kind of screwdriver. <laughs> you know, I'll just come in. We'll teach you from the ground up. If they need steel-toed boots, they get them steel-toed boots. Um, it's a, a program that's very generously supported by donors. So we have the funds to make it just a wraparound program for these young people that want to learn. Um, they do engine building. They've done a lot of ground up restoration pro, uh, projects. Uh, there's a motorcycle track. Um, wow. They do some painting. So really bits and pieces, welding, you know, bits mm-hmm. and pieces of these hands-on skills um, that they can leave high school having that foundation for Mm -hmm. whether they go into an apprenticeship program or or a trade school, you know, they've got a really solid foundation with us hands-on work. What's the age range? Mostly high school. Um, They're mostly high school. We do have a couple middle school students that kind of, you know, the go getters, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and you know it's it's mostly students from the area because it's you know it's a week night and mm-hmm. we're kind of we're a bit of a trek to get out here. So, mm-hmm. um, but I know there is interest in growing that program into the future, and we've had some kind of creative ideas on what that could look like. Because I know when I go out into Kalamazoo or do some networking in Kalamazoo, Battle Creek, mm-hmm. um, every time we bring up Garage Works, people's ears just perk up. Like, yep. Oh my gosh you know, how many kids can we reach with a program like this? And, you know, especially students that are in, um, you know, in cities where maybe they're not getting exposure to opportunities like this. Yeah. So um, we actually have one way that we're growing is a new summer program with support from the RPM Foundation. 
Okay. Uh, we received two grants from the RPM Foundation this year, and one of them is supporting a new summer program that expands the Gilmore Garage Works. And those will be, we have three of them scheduled so far this summer, and it's a Wednesday through Saturday. We're calling them uh, summer apprenticeships through Gilmore Garage Works. And each one has a specific topic that they're working on. So we have a hot rod one. We have an engine building. Oh, we're hoping to have an engine building one. Um, and the idea there being they'll kind of camp, you know, summer camp-ish mm -hmm. yep. um, for ages 18 to 22. So we're looking for uh, young people that have just graduated from high school. Okay. Maybe they're in college. Maybe they're mm -hmm. doing something else, you know, but young people interested in going into these careers and getting some of that hands-on work in restoration. And uh, they come on a Wednesday, get a little intro, get some time in the shop, come to our Wednesday night cruise in, time in the shop Thursday, Friday, and then on Saturday, attend our car show. And we scheduled these around so that the hot rod one is the week of Relics yeah. Riot, mm -hmm. you so, know, yep. so the car show goes with what they're learning in the shop that Excellent. week. Excellent. Okay. And yeah. I know one big thing being a gearhead, the tooling. Mm -hmm. Am I going to have to buy tools? Do I have to show up with tools? How does this system work for somebody that is starting out and yep. maybe has a couple grandpa and dad's wrenches mm -hmm. and other than that, he's starting out. What does he have to look towards with yeah, this Yeah, no, system? we have all the materials they would need in the shop. Um, and like I said earlier, yeah, if, if they need boots, we'll get them boots. You know, they don't need anything. And I know our, our education director and program coordinator for um, for Garage Arts have expressed interest in pursuing possibly a scholarship program so that students, when they're leaving high school, graduating from Garage Works, hey, if you're going into a program, being able to give them, you know, $1,000 to go get started on their own equipment so nice. that they've nice. got some, nice. some stuff on hand mm. as they start their career. That's awesome. Yeah. They just go to the website to learn more in yep. terms of the summer apprenticeships. Yep. GilmerCarMuseum.org. Okay. Uh, we've got an announcement in the news section on the website, and that's got a full explanation of what the program is and a direct link to the application. And we're hoping, you know, because we have lodging, they'll be staying right nearby at the Kellogg Biological Station just down the road. Um, so it will kind of be truly a camp experience, and we're able to help with transportation costs, you know, really... Um, cost is Jeez not a, a barrier for people. We want them to come. Um, so we're hoping we'll get some applicants from all over the country and nice. really be able to expand or, you know, at the very least Detroit, Chicago, you know, within a, a, a fairly expansive driving radius to come and experience what we have to offer. So they don't impressive. have to stay in tents on the ground no. <laughs> and dig I mean, their own could. latrines or anything like that. No, it's a good, good accommodation. Mm -hmm. That is a really cool thing. Summer apprenticeships here at the Gilmore Car Museum. Amy Everhart Perry, Director of Development and Membership. Thank you for enlightening us. I know you're gonna have new member applications coming in, gilmorecarmuseum.org. Honestly, and I'm just gonna say this, uh, the, the membership levels are, they're unbelievable, full of benefits, and they are very, very affordable. And really uh, great, as we're running this before Father's Day, hint, hint. There you go. Great opportunity. That's one of those Father's yeah. Day gifts. It's not socks. For the <laughs> love of God, don't give Dad socks. Another you know, great gift, Well, no, too, just hold on. Like, hold, yeah, hold, hold, hold on. Just <laughs> hold on, man. Okay. No, no. Some of us need socks. Need socks. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, Another but it is. And, I'm, I mean, that's what I do. Like I said, one of my things is um, Great Lake Shipping. And I'm a member of all kinds of groups for stuff like that. And people have given me memberships to them and it's awesome. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, once that happens, if it's you be it an online it's, magazine or the one that's supposed to, oh yeah, it's this month I should be getting that. You re up because you don't want to give it up, yeah. you know? Absolutely. And yeah, you, were, you were going to say something. I was going to say another great <clears throat> gift are our Model T driving classes. Oh, so ooh, that's yes, really yes. something that people get excited about, that experiential um, opportunity here on our campus. That's so something I think you we book still have a, a few slots. They do usually sell out, but yep. we do have a few slots available still if they go to our website at Gilmore Car Museum. We've got an in. We've been promised at the last four <laughs> yeah. auto shows I, that I we're going to, we just got to get Come down on, here and man. do it. Jay keeps on saying that. By the way, soon to be added, the 
Amy Everhart Perry station wagon driving experience. experience. There you go. So we are going to push you for that. That needs to be a new added member benefit. <laughs> Work on that. Young okay. kids need to Please. ride in a station wagon yes. in the way yes. back yes. one they time. They need to understand what that hard bench seat yes. was <laughs> and that back and you didn't have any air condition and those windows just baked you in and yep. you just had no choice but to sit there and deal with it see and and amy al and i have come from that era where the station wagon back seat mine was a, a 69 ford country mm. squire it was a 70 they faced each other didn't they, they faced instead of each going other. backwards and they had metal edges yep. because the floor folded down and every there was no plastic back right there. everything was metal. <laughs> that's true so you were decapitated if you're a kid yep. you know in the car fat and stop fast no seriously I think we, there were a lot of, I'm going to stop the car soon. Yes. <laughs> as I rode back there with my little sister. So I, I love that story. Uh, shout out to the off mic expert and go to <laughs> support staff, Emily Wygan, director of marketing. Emily, thanks for everything for uh, setting this up. And Amy, this was easier than talking in front of everybody at your wedding, right? Pretty much. <laughs> We appreciate this. Thanks so much. GilmoreCarMuseum.org. And uh, that's going to put the wraps on episode 61. We are going to have to come back and actually go outside and experience this on a night when there are people here and and have a lot of fun with that. And well, t- and if the listeners learn nothing, it's, you know, the price of everything nowadays. John and I were just talking about it coming down here, whether it's fixing vehicles or going out to dinner or going to a movie, whatever. This place I've always felt has been a bargain. I've always yeah. felt like I've gotten my money's worth, and it sounds like it's still that way. Great. I mean, yeah. really is for that's for what goal. you've got. That's yeah. the goal. Our our board wants to make sure that this place is accessible to all that want to enjoy yeah. it. And you know, that was yep. the goal of our founders. Yeah, that's to share their fantastic collection with yeah. as many people as wanted to see it. I hope you will share this podcast with your board members because mm-hmm. I want to tell them we appreciate what they do, and that is important. That accessibility for all at a price level. As someone who lived a life with a disability, this is also an accessible area. You guys do a great job with that. And uh, I'm going to put the wraps on episode number 61. Amy, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, for uh, Michigan's Auto Talk podcast, I'm Phil Tower. Don't forget, check us out on Facebook. We are there uh, really, really checking it anytime. We lo- love your messages, love your ideas, and uh, we'd love to hear your Gilmore Car Museum stories there as well, too. Mm-hmm. Facebook.com forward slash Michigan's auto talk podcast and thank you for joining us live from the gilmore car museum here in beautiful hickory corners michigan until next time i'm phil tower i'm al schwinkendorf i'm john puick thanks for listening